Well, coming up on this week's show, we are looking at craft beer, wine, and spirits. And boy, what a great show. We did a lot of travels around central Ohio, but we also traveled up to the Canton area here at Gervasi Vineyards, and they call this a winery resort. You're going to find out why on today's show. Renee, what did you find? Well, thanks, Mike. We're going to take you to a place where you can enjoy delicious craft beer and cocktails, as well as a place where you can enjoy a wonderful, robust cup of coffee. Plus, we're going to show you a place that actually roasts the coffee beans and take you to a farm where they grow the ingredients for the craft beer. I'm Renee Joseph, and along with Mike Kilburn, we are Out and About Columbus. Thirsty Dog Brewing, where they say every dog has its day. This beer is distributed in 15 states, and John is joining us today to talk about it. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. Tell us a little bit of the history of this. Uh, Thirsty Dog was founded in 1997. Our first location was a brew pub in uh, Canton, Ohio, on Dressler Road. Uh, we then expanded and had uh, locations in uh, Centerville, near Dayton, and uh, in Copley uh, at 77 and 18. Those operated until about 2005, uh, and around 2003 we started getting into production brewing. We contract brewed for a year or two, and expanded slowly state by state. Uh, and in 2007 we started to rehab here in downtown Akron, our current facility, which was built in the 1860s. It was the Burkhart Brewery. Isn't, isn't Ohio one of the leading states for craft beer? It is, uh, and it, especially in the last five years as they changed some of the laws, they took some of the barriers to entry out for craft brewing. Well, I, could, I couldn't help but notice some very interesting names for the different brews. Where do those names come from? Um, Are you let everybody here make decisions? Or? We, we all have some input at the end of the day on uh, new beers and stuff. Uh, we've come up with a name and try to, you know, fit it somewhat to the beer or have a dog that's representative of the beer. Uh, you know, the beer on the new NEO can is uh, one of my partner's dogs named Hoppus. So obviously it's a nice fitting dog with uh, a hoppy beer, but Hoppus is named after an old beer that was Hoppus Maximus. Well, give us some contact information website where people can learn more about Thirsty Dog and uh, grab some. ThirstyDog.com, follow us on Facebook. You can find out about events, tastings. We are doing a couple beer dinners still. We've got plenty of space so we can socially distance. Uh, check us out there. Come visit us at the East Bank Flats or at 587 Grant Street. Well, coming up, we're going to take you to a farm that makes the ingredients for locally crafted beer. Stay with us. Well, if you're like me, you can't start your day without a delicious cup of coffee, and we found a great place in Marysville. With me is Riley. Riley, thank you for having us out to the coffee hall and creamery. Tell us how you got started in this business. So, primarily started with um, me and my siblings, um, they, uh, my two sisters, they worked in coffee shops for most of their life or since high school. And um, I have an interest in business and they have an interest in coffee and we kind of combined together and um, worked together and started this, so. Well, it's a wonderful little place here. Coffee is delicious. Thank you. Where do you source all of your ingredients for your business? So we really focus on sourcing everything from other local businesses. So almost all of our products are sourced from other businesses in the county or surrounding counties. So um, like for example, all of our milk that we use for our drinks is sourced from a small dairy here, just maybe about 15 miles from us. And they milk and bottle and deliver the milk to us themselves. Um, our coffee is sourced here in Mechanicsburg from another local business. And then we use local bakers and um, try to keep everything as local as we can. So uh, we're not only providing a great product, but we're also dumping back into the local community and other local businesses. So what do you love about owning this business here? Um, I think that the most rewarding thing that we've found is not just owning a business, but being involved in a community and connecting with the community. You know, I've lived and worked around here 
my whole life and until you own a business here and you, you, know, you get to meet so many more people and connect with so many more people and um, we really believe that people don't just buy products from a business, they buy products from people. Well, I couldn't say better myself. You're absolutely right. Riley, thank you so much for sharing your coffee shop with us today and having us out. And how do we find out more information? Um, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram, The Coffee Hall and Creamery. Uh, we're just located here in downtown Marysville. We also have a website. It's thecoffeehall.com. Well, we found a coffee shop and pizzeria out in the Canal Winchester area that is just amazing. They were doing a lot of things. And to talk about that is Brian and Tammy. Glad to have you guys on the show. Thank Thanks. you. So, Tammy, I'm going to start with you. So let's tell us a little bit about the story. Tell our viewers about what you're doing here. Well, I think it was about probably four or five years ago we decided to build this building. We didn't have a plan for it, but we already owned the property. And in the middle of construction, my husband came up with the bright idea of opening a pizza shop. And he came over to me and said, you know, I've got it. We're going to do a pizza shop. And I said, babe, that is the dumbest idea I've ever heard. I'm not looking like a true wife, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm not doing a pizza <laughs> shop. Uh, by the end of that day, when Brian suggested the pizza shop, I said to him, if we can be a second chance employer and help people like this and give back a, a portion of this money, then I'm all in. And so uh, the Olive Branch was born out of that. Oh, that is a neat story. Well, you know what? Brian made me some great coffee. So talk a little bit about the coffee and the products here. Well, when we decided to open this, that was another one of my contingencies was if he gets a pizza shop, I get a coffee shop because I just felt like we needed a nice coffee shop in this area where you could go and just sit and relax, meet with friends. You have the pizza here, but you've got the knowledge and you went to New York to get it. So tell our viewers a little bit about that. So we went to pizza school in New York and, and I found that pizza school because I was looking for a specific oven. I just didn't want a typical franchise pizzeria. So uh, we came up with the I, I found them online and I went to the pizza. We went to the pizza school and it was a great experience. So a lot of our recipe, our dough recipe comes from New York. Everything here is made fresh. We make our sauce fresh every day. Uh, we make our dough fresh every day, um, and our ingredients are fresh. So if you come have a salad or anything you put on your pizza, it's all fresh. We cut it fresh that day. Well, give us some contact information where we can find you. Come out and enjoy the pizzeria, some great coffee, and, and just the environment. All right, so we are north of 33 on Gender Road on the east side of the road. The address is 5600 Gender Road. We're the building in the back behind Heaven Sent Children's Academy. And you can find us at the olivebranchcp.com. Would you like your business to make an appearance on an upcoming episode of Out and About Columbus? Send your contact information to info at outandaboutcolumbus.com to learn more. Great beer starts with great ingredients. And we're at a place that produces those great ingredients. We are at Rustic Brew Farm in Marysville, and with me is Matt. Matt, thanks for having us out. Sure, my pleasure. Thanks for coming. I didn't know all this went into beer, brewing beer, and you actually make all the fine ingredients for this. Tell us about what you do here at the farm. Sure. Well, first of all, we're a farm, and um, I think most people don't know that it probably takes about 18 months to two years from the time you plant the seed till it finally gets into the end product, which is the beer. Um, so we, we grow the barley and hops on our farm, and then uh, we malt the barley here in our, our malt house on the farm and uh, deliver that end product to the, to the brewers. Well, let's talk about some of the breweries and um, beer places that you actually serve. Sure. Yeah, we've worked with about close to 50 around the state. Um, the ones that are fresh in my mind, this, uh, we just delivered this week to North High in Columbus, um, Grove City Brewing, Pretentious Barrel House, um, and then Southside Brewing out in Cambridge. Uh, and later this week, I'm going up to up north to uh, Cary Brewing Station and uh, Urban Woody in uh, Fostoria. And the two that are probably closest to us right down the road are Dalton Union here in Marysville and then uh, Rhetoric Brewing uh, right up the road here. So they're, they're our most local right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What other things do you do on the farm? Uh, well, we recently bought a uh, stone mill and started grinding some of our uh, non-GMO corn and wheat into flour. So we got a bag here that we just started putting out there. We do cornmeal whole wheat flour and a pastry flour now. How do we find out more information about Rustic Brew Farm? Yeah, you go to our website, rusticbrewfarm.com. Um, it's got all our contact information. We're on social media, of course. We like to post pictures of the farm every now and then just to give a little insight to what's going on. So 
and then email or call or text. It's all on the website. So. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your farm with us today. Really a lot of, Thank this you. is really cool. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. We're going to tell you how these giant sized fritters and cinnamon rolls are related to the state of Texas. That coming up. We are here at one of Central Ohio's only brew distillery here at Endeavor in Grandview. And with me is Scott. Scott, welcome to Out and About Columbus. Thanks, it's great to be here, Renee. Well, tell us about Endeavor. What, what makes you guys so special here? And how'd you get your name? Yeah, so the name Endeavor was inspired by the collective global international experience of our three co-founders. We've studied brewing, we've brewed in Germany, France, Italy, England all over the world. We've traveled, climbed some of the highest mountains of the world, and the name Endeavor really embodies that spirit for us. And we try to bring a little bit of those experiences into every single glass that we serve here. What do you think makes you so unique here at Endeavor? Well, what really sets us apart at Endeavor is the fact that we're Central Ohio's first and only brewstillery. That means we're both a brewery where we make beers, but we're also a distillery, so we make spirits such as vodka, gin, and white rum. Oh my goodness, so much to choose from. What are some of your favorite drinks here? We have a wide variety of really good cocktails that our staff has put together. Uh, we're really excited to release our whiskeys this fall as well. And I'm a big fan of a lot of our beers. We have a variety of continental style beers and a, a really a beer and a drink for every palate and every person. At Endeavor, we are different on the brewing side. Our equipment is different. We're one of only a handful of local breweries that have a three vessel system. It sounds really complicated, but it allows us full temperature control on our mash, which really means that we can produce a wide variety of continental styles beers, German, Belgian style beers, and not just a full menu of IPAs. Wow, you guys have really thought of it all. I love that. Tell us how we find out more information about Endeavor Brewing Company. Yeah, the best way is to follow us on all our social media accounts at Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, as well as at our website, EndeavorBrewing.com. We go through all our travels of wineries. Gervasi Vineyards is one of the places that really stand out. That's because this is a winery resort. And joining me today is Scott to talk about it. Scott, welcome to the show. Glad to have you back on. We're happy to have you here. So how has it evolved into this winery resort? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, when we started as a small winery as we did 10 years ago, and you add all the different restaurants, now a distillery, which we're sitting in today, the Welcome Center, the Still House, and 48 hotel rooms, you really have evolved into a resort. So we have lots of options for people to stay overnight, uh, to host special events, multiple restaurants, and all kinds of fun things to experience and do. Yeah, it's amazing. Every time I come up here, there's new additions. Uh, I haven't been in a couple of years. Uh, but we're in, what do they call this, the Spirit House? The Still House. Still House. Yeah, yeah. for a distillery, so this is the Still House, and it's in a, kind of a repurposed uh, looking church, so uh, we made kind of made it the center of our Italian village here and our welcome center. It's also a coffee shop by day, so it's really a versatile space and, and also able to make our own spirits and our own distillery. Well, Scott, what's this wine you have in the bar? Well, we have a brand new wine we call Serenata, which is our Malbec. All of our wines have Italian names. So this wine uh, celebrates the Italian word for serenade. Well, tell us a little bit about the spirits that you have here that uh, you have out on the bar. Well, we just released two brand new bourbons. So we wanted to kind of highlight those today in addition to our wine barrel bourbon. So what we're doing is taking uh, product, uh, high-end bourbon products and then putting like a really unique finish on them. So in the case of the wine barrel, it goes into our Cabernet barrel, which comes from our own Cabernet wine we're making. So really unique product. The coffee is another thing that uh, you guys are doing. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, when we built this beautiful space, we said, you know, it's going to sit empty most of the day. We're looking for something where people can uh, and enjoy and gather during the day, and, and coffee was a perfect fit. So coffee house by day, we work with a, uh, a local importer to make a really unique uh, custom coffee blend that is unique to us. Give us some contact information where we can learn more about Gervasi We Vineyard. can always go to gervasivineyard.com. Our website has tons of great information, and our number is 330 497 Like the Out and About Columbus Facebook page for pictures, video, and more on the show, including news, upcoming shows, and even exclusive behind-the-scenes content. That's facebook.com slash Columbus. Well, look at that case of sweet treats. We are at Doe Company, better well known as Doco, to the locals here. And Grayson and Langston joining us to talk about 
this great little business today. Thanks for coming out, Mike. So tell us a little bit about how you got in the donut business. Sure. So we grew up in the back of a donut shop. Our parents started where we grew up down in Texas. Uh, we would sleep in the back. We had little cots that we would set up in the office area, and we'd pretty well sleep until we smelled the donuts, and little, then we'd get little up. donut pacifiers? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'd get up, eat them hot, and then probably go back to bed usually. As we grew up, we all took different lines of work. We all kind of ended up in different areas. My parents and I were in North Dakota. He was down in Texas still. Uh, everybody was kind of doing their own thing. We made it here to Ohio with our line of work. We kind of saw what kind of a community it is here and how they get behind their small local businesses. And we all just decided, let's get everybody back together. Let's give Donuts one more shot. Well, Langston, turning to you, I understand that your signature donuts here is the cinnamon roll and the apple fritters Absolutely. and that they're huge because you guys are from texas and everything bigger in texas right <laughs> yeah you could say that yeah yeah give us um, a yeah give us a look at these basically they kind of speak for themselves um this is just a oh, our cinnamon smokes. rolls on the front and our apple fritters at the back um basically they're just as big as we can possibly make them we try to make it a a thing that people see and notice in the case whenever they come in they're amazing they're great um, we use real apples um, apple chunks in our apple fritters um, cinnamon in the cinnamon rolls um, but everybody raves about these well give us some contact information where we can learn more about doco all right so we've got a instagram page um, doco donuts on there we've got our facebook page which is facebook.com slash doco donuts uh, you can look us up there see all of our reviews all of our pictures Make what you our hungry. customers yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> and it gives you our locations on there all three locations um, or you can just call the number on the page on the page today Coming up, we're going to take you to a place where you can get not only great craft beer and spirits, but some of this delicious food. Stay with us. Well, if you're looking for a unique twist to craft beer, you've got to check out Wild Ohio Brewing. And with me today is Jacob and Alex. And Jacob, let's start with you. Thank you so much for having us out today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, tell us all about your beer. What is tea beer? So we take a little different twist on the traditional style of beer. Uh, we combine tea, sugar, and fruit um, and use a beer yeast to make our products. So what we end up with is a more lighter, kind of fruity, sweeter type of beer than what you traditionally get from most craft breweries. Now, is it gluten-free? It is completely gluten-free. We're a completely uh, grain-free grain -free facility here. Well, tell us what's new here at Wild Ohio Brewing. Um, so something new that we just rolled out is our uh, 100 calories. Um, these beers, instead of using sugar on the back end to uh, sweeten them up, we use a monk fruit, um, which still adds some sweetness to the beer, but also keeps the calorie count down. So um, we've got four different flavors of those. You can find them in six packs or in our mixed 12 pack. Um, 100 calories, really light drinking, very good. Thank you so much, Jacob. Now we're going to have a chance to talk to Alex. Yeah, absolutely. Alex, thanks for joining us today. Now that Jacob told us all about your great beer, where do we find it? So you can find it at Giant Eagle. Um, you can find it at Meyer, Kroger, uh, Walgreens, um, as well as uh, various different carryouts locally here. Um, and you know, you can find us all out about us on uh, on Facebook and Instagram as well. Do you have a website that we can lo look you guys up? We do. So you can go to WildOhioBrewing.com. Um, there we have everything about our flavors and our beer, as well as um, a map that you can find um, your lowest, your closest retailer. That's awesome. This beer looks wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on today and sharing it with all of our viewers. Thank you, Renee. Fresh roasted coffee beans make some of the best coffee. And we're here at a place that actually roasts their own beans. We're at Morrison Coffee, and with me is Stephen, the owner. Stephen, welcome to Out and About Columbus. Hi. Hi. Well, tell us, you're a new coffee company. What makes you different? What sets you guys apart? Yeah, so at Morrison Coffee, we believe that fresh coffee is better. So all of our coffee is roasted to order. Um, so we don't have bags sitting around on a warehouse getting stale and old. So we roast all of our coffee only after you've actually placed the order. Um, so simply put, you've never had coffee this fresh. 
Um, and in addition to the freshness of the coffee, we only buy the highest quality coffee available. Um, we pay far above fair trade prices, um, which, in, which means not only that uh, farmers and producers get a better life, but you get a better cup of coffee. Well, I know it absolutely smells delicious in here, but is fresh roasted coffee really the best? Is, does it really taste better? Oh, absolutely. Um, most people don't know this, but just two weeks after roasting, coffee begins to lose a lot of its flavor. Um, so any of the coffee bags that you'll buy from like the grocery store or most coffee shops, really, it's already stale and lifeless. Um, and so we believe that if somebody gets the opportunity to taste their truly fresh cup of coffee, that they'll notice the difference. It truly is astounding. Um, so they'll be able to taste all of those unique and delicious characteristics that makes the coffee delicious. Well, you're making me want it. <laughs> Where do I find it? Um, so we currently don't have any physical location. Um, we eventually would like to work up to a cafe. Um, but for the moment, we're online only, so you can buy it at morrisoncoffee.com. Um, but the good news is we do offer free local delivery. So anywhere in the greater Columbus area, um, including all the major suburbs. So we'll actually hand deliver the coffee the very same day we roast it. So it's incredibly fresh. We do ship our coffee as well, only in the state of Ohio. Um, buy any two bags and you get free shipping. Um, and then for the moment, we're also doing 20% off for any of the first time customers. So we really hope people will take advantage and give us a try. We know they'll love it. I hope so too, because it really, it really makes a difference, like you said. How do we find out more information? Um, either directly through our website. Um, we do have a Facebook, social media pages and all that. Um, but you can always contact us, but mostly every, all the info is on our website. Wonderful. Stephen, thank you again for sharing your wonderful new coffee company with us and letting us try it. It's wonderful. Yeah, thank you so much. Miss any of today's show? Now you can catch it all on the go. Just visit onacolumbus.com for past episodes and all of our latest content. Great craft beer, delicious food, and an inviting atmosphere is what you'll find at Beerhead Bar in eatery in new albany with me is jared jared thanks for having us out today thank you for having me boy this looks fa fantastic but let's talk about your craft beer what sets you apart from other establishments in the area that focus on craft beer well i think our goal is to create a unique experience and a, an experience that changes with every visit um, by, by having a rotating draft system of, of 50 beers on draft all the time, um, it, it allows us to create an experience that changes with each and every visit um, by having new and exciting craft beers on um, every, time, every time you come in for a visit. Well, let's talk about your food here because this is really amazing. Now, you guys, your motto was approachable food, I understand, that's reasonably priced um, and not your typical bar food. Tell us about some of the selections that you have that complement your craft beers and your other drink selections. Well, I would say that our food is also craft focused in the sense of um, all of our food options fare well with the beer that we're serving. Um, whether it's our shareable items uh, like chicken wings and, and boneless chicken wings and chicken bites, um, our signature item, which is the barbarian pretzel, um, that's always an eye-catching item uh, for our guests as it comes out of the kitchen. Um, and leading into sandwiches, wraps, and pizzas that all pair well with the craft beer selections. Well, you've definitely com accomplished your goal here with all of those things. This is a great place. How do we find out more information? Uh, well, you can go to our website, beerheadbar.com, uh, to look up any location, uh, any this location or any of our lo other locations in Ohio. Um, yeah, we also have a Facebook page, Beerhead uh, New Albany, uh, and Instagram as well that they can follow. Well, Camelot Cellars has underwent some great changes, and it is a great place to come and enjoy, and we're going to talk about that experience today. Renard Green has joined us today to talk about that. Renard, welcome to the show. Good to have you on. Glad to be here. So tell us how you got involved with Camelot Sellers. Well, it started uh, probably about a year ago. Myself and uh, Janine Aquino, who's the former owner, had a conversation about doing some consulting things together. And through that conversation, she revealed that this was something she was looking to kind of get out of and get more into something else that she would enjoy. Sure. Um, through that conversation, uh, I decided that it would be kind of cool to, to own a restaurant. So we talked about it. I kicked the tires and it made sense financially for me to do so. That's amazing. Great story. 
So tell us a little bit about the rebranding and I, the place absolutely looks great. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was get rid of the old idea of what Camelot was and introduce it to a, a, a different culture and a different set of people. So we changed the logo, went for something that's a little bit more cutting edge, and a little bit different. Uh, we worked on doing the bottle labels and, and changing it so that it made a little bit more of a, a lively impression with those who would come in contact with it. And then we just redid the space and try to modernize it and kind of give it a new funky and eclectic feel. Uh, the idea was to create a new energy and a new vibe around the new brand and hopefully that people would come in and feel comfortable with it and enjoy it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that experience. That's, that's what it's all about, right? Yes, sir. So for the first time person that walks through the door, Bernard, what do they do? Oh, well, the first time you walk in, what you'll, be do, what you'll actually happen is you'll be greeted by our hostess. Um, the idea is to create who I am and engender it into this particular um, establishment. And the way that we did that was try to make it really, really fun, interesting, and personable. So when you come in, you'll be greeted with, hey, how are you doing, right? How can we help you? Where would you like to be seated? So you get through that part of the process, you'll be greeted by our uh, servers who will come in and give you water and, and love on you a little bit. And then we just have great conversations from there. You have the music going and just try to create, like I said, an energy and a vibe that's a little bit different than anything else in Columbus. So great place to come and relax and enjoy an evening. Give us the days of the week that you're open and some contact information like your website. Okay, sounds great. So you can come to Camelot Cellars on Wednesday through Saturday from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now, outside of that, uh, our website is www, obviously, camelotcellars.com. Well, if you're a bourbon lover, then you've got to experience the Beeline. Make your way down to Cincinnati, cross over the bridge, and experience the edge of bourbon country. Julie told us more about some of the things you're going to find on the tour, as well as some great bourbon restaurants. Julie, welcome to Out and About Columbus. Thank you for having us out to the Beeline. Thanks, Renee, and welcome to Bourbon Country. Well, tell us exactly what the Beeline is and why is this so unique to the Cincinnati area? Absolutely. Well, I don't know if a lot of people know, but the Kentucky side of Cincinnati is the beginning of Bourbon Country. So once you cross that river, you're in the state where 95% of the country's bourbon is made, Kentucky. So we thought it would be unique to take our four Kentucky Bourbon Trail craft distilleries, five amazing bourbon restaurants and five amazing bars and blend them into a neat experience called the Beeline. Now we're standing here with a bunch of bourbon. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're in a Rick House right now, which is really a fancy word for a bourbon warehouse. So these beautiful 53 gallon barrels were in New Riff's warehouse. This bourbon is aging for four years. And when it is ready, it is going to be the most beautiful amber, amber delight that you've ever tasted. But a Rick House is a really fun experience in bourbon country. And you can have that right over the river from Cincinnati and I promise you, you will take away some amazing memories. It sounds like a great thing to do when we visit Cincinnati. How can we find out more information? Absolutely. Well, what you want to do is go on findyoursippingpoint.com and download your cool little beeline guide. So when you have your beeline guide, you can visit all of the stops on the beeline, get stamps, and then we'll send you some cool bourbon swag. And again, that's findyoursippingpoint.com. Wonderful. Julie, thank you again for sharing all of this great information and some bourbon. Absolutely. <laughs> Come and see us sometime. All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show. And next week, we're back in Columbus checking out businesses around town. And that's a favorite show for a lot of folks who really enjoy that. And we got some new businesses that you're really going to enjoy. Remember, you can catch the show at 7.30 a.m. on Saturdays on The CW or 10 a.m. on ABC6 on Sundays. Or you can always go to our website at onacolumbus.com. And that's where you can see all our shows. Everything is online for you. Until next week, have a great week.